This is the height of irony. We all know that sunscreen is far and away the most effective defense against skin cancer. But it turns out if you use apartment or drugstore bought sunscreen, you might just be trading one kind of cancer for another. Keep watching this video to see if your preferred sunscreen is on the list. Because it probably is. Johnson & Johnson recently revealed that five of their most popular sunscreen models contain a cancer causing carcinogen. In actuality, Johnson & Johnson have at least 26 types of sunscreen with cancer causing levels of carcinogens. I'll get back to that discrepancy later on in the video. But for now, just assume that J&J only has five kinds of sunscreen that will literally give you cancer if you use them over an extended period of time. The carcinogen found in the sunscreen is benzene, exposure to which causes leukemia, or what's commonly known as blood cancer. Benzene is also prevalent in tobacco smoke, car exhaust, and industrial emissions. Exposure to all three of which is also known to cause cancer. I should say at this point that the benzene in sunscreen is likely the result of an accidental contamination. No company is deliberately putting carcinogens into their sunscreen. But this is still very much a complete failure on the part of Johnson & Johnson. There are quality control measures corporations take on a constant basis to prevent disasters like this from happening. Six Sigma is an incredibly popular guide for corporate improvements taught at MBAs all over the world. I don't want to bore you with the nitty gritty details from my three years in B-School, so I'll make this concise. One of the core tenets of Six Sigma is that no manufacturing company should have more than 3.4 defects per million manufactured parts. This is referred to as 3.4 ppm for short. For example, if Johnson & Johnson made exactly 10 million bottles of sunscreen, Six Sigma dictates that they should have less than 34 non-conforming bottles. Sunscreen with carcinogens is very much a non-conforming defect. Johnson & Johnson has 9 different kinds of sunscreen with a ppm of more than 3.4, one of which is nearly double that at 6.7 ppm. Sunscreen literally only has one purpose to prevent us from getting cancer. But J&J just swooped in with their carcinogenic products and said, whoopsies, our product that's supposed to save you from cancer will actually literally give you cancer. In J&J's defense, they did issue a voluntary recall on the problematic sunscreens in question. But I very much doubt that they did it out of concern for our health and safety. You see, Johnson & Johnson is not in a great spot right now, reputation-wise. They're currently in the middle of juggling a whole slew of PR fiascos, including baby powder made from asbestos, their prominent role in the American opioid crisis, vagina lawsuits, and their corona vaccine flops. So it's pretty likely that given their wealthy history of paying hundreds of millions to even billions of dollars in lawsuits for endangering the public health, that they're just hoping to nip this cancer-causing sunscreen disaster in the bud before it spirals out of control into another costly lawsuit. All of this being said though, Johnson & Johnson isn't the only entity at fault. On May 24th, a quality assurance company named Valley Sure released a 19-page report to the FDA in which they outlined findings on different popular sunscreen which contain more than two parts per million of benzene. The Johnson & Johnson sunscreens were the most prominent in the list of sunscreens containing benzenes, with 24 different kinds of sunscreen containing dangerous levels of a carcinogen. Now, here's the disturbing bit. I mean, this whole video is disturbing, but this is the extra disturbing bit. Johnson & Johnson recalled 5 different models of sunscreen. They own 24 models of sunscreen that Valisher found to have contained cancer-causing levels of benzene. Of those 5 recalled, only 3 were included on Valisher's list. Meaning, at a bare minimum, Johnson & Johnson have at least 26 models of sunscreen containing deadly levels of carcinogens. Sunscreen use is critical to public health a Johnson Johnson spokesperson said in response to the recall. It's important that people everywhere continue to take appropriate sun protection measures, which would be a decent sentiment, except, again, Johnson & Johnson only recalled less than 20% of all the sunscreens containing an ingredient that would give its users leukemia. If public health is as important to Johnson & Johnson as their spokesperson claims, then why weren't the other 21 sunscreens also recalled? If you ask Johnson & Johnson this question, they'll likely respond with something along the lines of, because the dangers of benzene is from the inhalation of the compound, not absorption through their skin. 
It's the same sentiment that toxicology professor Martin Smith said in response to the recalls. But that's either a bad faith response, or both Martin Smith and Johnson & Johnson have a poor understanding of how a sunscreen works. If you Google, most important sunscreen place to apply, you will see that the very first search result is an article from thehealthy.com titled 7 Critical Spots You Need to Remember to Apply Sunscreen. The top 5 of those 7 critical spots that we all need to remember to apply sunscreen are, in order, scalp, ears, lips, eyelids, and neck. Do you want to know what all 5 of those critically important spots to apply sunscreen have in common? They're all located right next to the nose. The nose that we all use to breathe and inhale the air and aerosol around us. So unless Dr. Martin Smith and Johnson & Johnson think we all plug our nostrils before applying sunscreen, saying, well, people don't really breathe the products in, is a very lazy take. What's more, the justification of it's only bad when inhaled and not when absorbed through the skin, therefore the products are safe, doesn't make any sense when you look at the list of Johnson & Johnson owned sunscreens found with benzene. 24 of the 26 Johnson & Johnson sunscreens are applied via an aerial spray, 92%. The justification of the products are perfectly safe because benzene is perfectly safe when absorbed through the skin doesn't exactly work when only 8% of the sunscreen containing benzene are safely absorbed through the skin. Now, Johnson & Johnson could argue that people are already exposed to benzene all the time. Like I mentioned earlier, it's found in tobacco smoke, car exhaust, and industrial emissions. But the problem with this argument is that unless you're making out with your truck's exhaust pipe or sticking your head into industrial furnace on the regular, you're not actually inhaling anywhere near the same levels of benzene putting sunscreen containing benzene on your face would get you. Tobacco smoke is different since the act of smoking is done directly underneath your nose, but the justification of tobacco smokers inhale benzene all the time falls utterly flat when you take into account that cigarettes kill more than 8 million people worldwide every single year. So Johnson & Johnson makes at least 26 of these sunscreens. Who are the other companies on Valley Shirts report? Walgreens and CVS branded sunscreens also made appearances on this list, as did sunscreen from Banana Boat, Baby Gannix, Coppertone, La Roche, Target Store's generic sunscreen, Up and Up, Good Sense, Ulta MD, Raw Elements, Ethical Zinc, which is ironic given its name, Amazon's generic brand of sunscreen Solimo, Sunbum, Sunburnt, Fruit of the Earth, Max Block, Top Cure Every Day, and Walmart's generic brand of sunscreen Equate. So all of those companies, plus Johnson & Johnson as well as the FDA for not forcing recalls, are all complicit for this fiasco. If you're a heavy user of sunscreen, then I implore you to read Valley Shirt's report on cancer-causing sunscreens by visiting the link on the screen. I'll also put a list of the products Valley Shirt found containing high levels of benzene in about 30 seconds, so don't fret if you can't visit the link just yet. If you're a heavy user of specifically Neutrogena sunscreen, then you might want to keep your ears to the ground for potential class action lawsuits. You've already paid for their corporate negligence with your health, but cancer treatment is incredibly expensive, costing an average of around $10,000 a month. So it would be wise to prepare by getting as much money as you can from the people who introduce your skin to carcinogens. Here's every single sunscreen that Valley Shirt's testing found contained the carcinogenic known as benzene, in descending order of the amount of benzene they contain. And this is just all of the sunscreens mentioned in Valley Shirt's list. Not included are Aveeno's Protect Plus Refresh Aerosol Sunscreen and Neutrogena Cool Dry Sport Aerosol Sunscreen. Those are the two that Johnson & Johnson already recalled. Despite everything I've talked about in this video about the dangers of benzene, it is still important for everybody to use sunscreen when we're out in the sun. The aforementioned products notwithstanding, sunscreen is here to protect us from something much, much worse. Think about it this way. If you use sunscreen that contains benzene every day, you'll probably get cancer. The earlier mentioned expert and skeptic, Dr. Martin Smith, says as much in an interview with the Washington Post. If you use sunscreen that doesn't contain benzene every single day, you'll almost definitely be safe from cancer caused by damaging UV rays. But if you don't use sunscreen at all out of fear of benzene contamination, 
you'll almost definitely get hit with enough UV damage to give you the cancer you are trying to avoid to begin with. So while it may seem counter to the point of this video, my piece of advice is simple. It would behoove you to still use sunscreen, just as long as you're careful about the kinds of sunscreen you're using. 